In this video, we're talking about the position function, and we're going to be doing a really simple problem that asks us to find position when velocity is zero. So we've been given the position function x of t is equal to 100 minus 16t squared. And remember that a position function just models the position of an object over time t. So for example, if you plugged in t equals zero to give you initial time, or think about it as when you're starting the time that models this function, then you would get back initial position. Or if you plugged in t equals 1, if time is in seconds, for example, if time is in seconds, you plug in t equals 1, then you're asking this function, what is the position of the object after one second? And if you plugged in t equals 1, this function would give it to you. So this function models position of an object, and we're asked to find the object's position when velocity is equal to 0. So we have two things going on here, position and velocity. And the way that we relate them is velocity is the derivative of position. So you see here position is given by x of t. So the derivative of the position would be x prime of t. Well, that's equal to the velocity function. And in fact, you can think about it this way. You start with position, and if you take the derivative of position, you get velocity. If you take the derivative of velocity, you get acceleration. So that's how those three things are related. So if we're interested in the point where velocity is zero, then we're going to first need to find the velocity function, which of course we'll do by taking the derivative of position. So taking the derivative of position here, we're going to say x prime of t is going to be equal to, the derivative of 100 is zero, because it's a constant, so we have zero. And then here, negative 16t squared. Well, we just use the power rule, and we bring this exponent down in front and multiply it by the coefficient. So negative 16 times 2 gives us a negative 32. We leave the t, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so that exponent then is 1, which means that our derivative, x prime of t, is going to be equal to negative 32t. And remember, this is the derivative of position, which we've already said is the exact same thing as velocity. So the velocity function is negative 32t. So velocity is equal to negative 32t. But remember, we're interested in the point at which velocity is equal to 0. So in order to solve for the value of t that gives us a velocity of 0, we have to plug in 0 for velocity. So what we end up with then is instead of negative 32t equals velocity, we get 0 equals negative 32 t, and we want to solve this for t. So we'll just divide both sides by negative 32, and we see that t is equal to 0. So what that tells us is that at time equal to 0, or when we're first starting the clock, when we first start that stopwatch at t equals 0, initial time, that's when the velocity is going to be 0. So we want to take this value of t then and plug it back into the position function, because remember we were asked to find position when velocity is 0. So t equals 0 is the point in time at which velocity is going to be 0. So now we want to take that same time, plug it into the position function so we can find the position of the object at that point in time. So if t equals 0, instead of x of t, we're going to get x of 0. It's going to be equal to 100 minus 16. And then instead of t squared, we're going to get 0 squared. 0 squared, of course, gives us 0 times a negative 16. This whole term becomes 0. So we can say x of 0 is just equal to 100. So what we say then is that the position of the object at time t equals 0 is 100. This is the position of the object when velocity is 0.